I remember a time before the Cascade dried up. Here, in Verticello, the four nations of plant and bug people flourished and thrived. But the great waterfall that fed the land slowed to a trickle, revealing a vast salt sea and unknown islands. The only guide were the words of the 13 dried carvings. The water will slow to fall, but the tides are turning. Find the infinite lake to replenish the world and discover the salmon who will grant you a wish of whatever you desire. This marks the beginning of the tide, as many green folk hauled on the ships to find the infinite lake and maybe riches, adventure, excitement, and purpose along the way. And what exactly is a salmon? Is that a berry? That was 50 years ago, and the tide rushes forward ever still. There are many stories caught on the wind between sails, but why don't we hear just one? Of a butterfly gunman with clipped wings, a ripened and explosive piece of produce, and a witch made out of tea. This is Join the Party Campaign 3, The Rising Tide. Last time on Join the Party. Someone is inviting every pirate with a key to show up to some sort of conference in the dissolving belt. So that means everyone is on high alert for pirates with keys, which includes our main characters here who have a key. Riding that wave, Cammy, Troy, and Umby decide to make copies of the blueprint of how to make keys that they grab from their privateer mission to make some amber. They decide to sell it to the highest bidder, but the Outback Steakhouse guy is deranged, the weird guy on the beach is broke, so they have to work with war criminal and hot millipede Millie the Maleficent to buy their forgeries. We are going to be fashionably late to the big pirate conference because Aubergine was late getting on the boat. So, let's get the party started. So guys, Troy has spent the last 12 hours directly before we set sail for the Dissolve Belt learning how to weave and then weaving a hammock bed for the Pumpy so that his bed can hang directly above Troy's bunk Aww. and they can never be more than an arm's length distance apart during the entire voyage. I like that they, they are separate but together, you know? They're comfy mm. but together comf. My question is, why not let Pumpy sleep in your bunk? Because not comfy, Julia. That is comfy, though. Little cuddle friend. No, you've clearly never slept in a bed with a dog. I literally did on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like sleeping Prove next it. to what a dog, Julia? furry stone. Peppa. <laughs> Peppa the dog. It was, she was so sweet. I do like the idea of Troy doing this just for, like, I don't want to introduce this into the actual world, so I'm abstracting it, but, like, doing it just for a TikTok is like, (laughs) hey, I'm Troy. I learned things. Today I learned how to weave for my Pompey. And just, like, you're seeing the whole thing come together. (laughs) This is also a performance that Troy does right in front of the clock. Julia, I was was going to say, say, Troy is sitting in the town square in a sunbeam, shirtless, with the Pompey right in front of him tongue out like to the side as he laboriously weaves right and the thing is that you can unclip the little hammock from the hook in the ceiling and wear it as a sling (gasps) a little baby bjorn cute now can i pitch you all that instead of the tiktok in front of the clock there is a vine it's like 
you perform on the vine and it's like you can only have eight seconds or seven seconds or whatever it is. Before and the vine breaks, you're jumping off of the mm-hmm. volcano and the vine yeah. is your bungee cord. It's pretty yep, good. Yeah, 100%. Yep. That's pretty good. So you can you only are able to show your true self when you're on the vine before the vine like breaks when you're jumping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Brandon, of course, it's the time that it takes from jumping off the top to, to the, bottom, the bottom, and then it repeats. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. It's very good. And then there is a book that has everyone's faces in it, <laughs> <laughs> and you can see where everyone went to high school Bummer. as you go through the book. Bummer. Um, let me let me pose something to the three of you. I feel like it's been a week <laughs> since the last episode. <laughs> I feel like all of you needed to lay low for a week or so, being like, so much is going on. We really need to chill out before we leave. I feel like we got into too much. It's like when, like... Sorry, is this in character or out of character we're feeling that way? A both. Maybe both. Okay. I would say both. I'd say both. This is like um, on the week of New Year's, I accidentally went out like three days of the weekdays because I ended it with New Year's Day was on Monday and then I ended up seeing my brother and going to a, a comedy show like on different days and then I'm like uh oh I'm 32 and I went out three weekdays <laughs> of a week I need to stay inside for 48 hours so I feel like after the how wild the last few days have been for your characters I feel like maybe we gotta lay low for a little bit yeah. I'm cool with that. If you were to look at Umby, you would see big old bags under his eyes because he hasn't slept at all, like, watching his door in the night for, uh, you know, one specific intruder that may come in the middle of the night to... Um, ravish him. Yeah, I mean, she might send a bird that says, hey, you up. Not ravish him. Not <laughs> yeah. Not not what they're saying. <laughs> Is it, it doesn't help that in your mind every 30 seconds, your parent is going, there's a person outside. <laughs> there's a person. I remembered this joke from last episode. <laughs> it does help because oh, okay. is, it's what he asked them to do because he's looking. Oh, it's like alarm. Alarm. Yeah. This is, it's almost like you took the battery out of your smoke detector and you replaced it with one that was dying yeah. so that you would hear the chirp mm-hmm. every 15 seconds. Keeps me awake. Yeah. yeah. I don't have to chug coffee. Yeah. Brandon, can you also mm-hmm. put uh, the fire alarm chirp in the background of this podcast? No. no and just put Triggering. it in like th- four times at random no. times? No. Triggering. No. No. <laughs> no. Okay. We don't hate our listeners. Or- did I? Oh no! No, uh, the pay. No. Hey, the patrons <laughs> definitely don't have this. So it's spent five dollars. We would never do that, <laughs> Eric. That's a wonderful Eric. idea. Every episode is also fire alarm chirp episode. Listen, if for some reason someone had a gun to our heads and we all had to work for Spotify, that's what we would do for Spotify podcast. It's not what we're doing here. <laughs> It's like watermarked. It's like every 15 seconds, it's like, this podcast is owned by Joy the Party Incorporated. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This is the equivalent of us putting, like, naughty words in the back of Disney cartoons. (laughs) Yeah. Just putting the the fire alarm chirp in it. like a DRM on our DVDs. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. So yeah, just we they're ad free and smoke alarm chirp free episodes. Listen, it, we could advertise that the ad free episodes are free from smoke alarms. That would be true, but we won't. That's true. All right, um, Brandon, Julia, how would you feel about trying to connect with our favorite foppish trader and see if he has any info or perhaps wants Ooh. to get some info for us before we set out? Real question: Would it be good or bad? We haven't seen Arello in a while. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. To get some info for sure, yeah. We can dangle one of our new Amber, but not give it to him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we need any new information. Just see if he has any mm-hmm. existing information, you know? That's true. Mm-hmm. Sure. I mean, you haven't seen Arello on the island recently. That's true. So. Do we have, like, a flag that we fly or, like, a leaf on the outside of the volcano that we, you know, mm. move to indicate that we are, like, wanting commerce and trade? Yeah, I mean, you tell me how you get in touch with Arello. I thought it's just Troy takes his shirt off. Do we still have the little bit of Harold on Arello's ship? Oh, yeah. Didn't we do that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we did. But I don't know if he's on the same ship, but we did do that. All right. Um, Let's say a couple days before uh, the great weaving in the town square, um, Troy's going to, you know, he's cleaning out the ship. We've not done like a deep clean for a while. <laughs> You, need to, you don't need to get some liquids? I probably need to get some liquids. Yeah, you gotta get some liquids. Get some liquids. All right, so, um, we're good, guys, we're gonna throw a surprise party for a man. <laughs> okay, right now? Yeah, no, on the ship. It's Troy's birthday. We're gonna throw a surprise party. That would actually be cute. That would be that pretty would be good. That would be adorable. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Think about it. Just think about it. We're gonna throw a surprise party. Everyone bring something. 
Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. So yeah, why don't you tell me how do you get in touch with Arello? Yeah, I think you have you you can still have a piece of hell on there. Well, Eric, we we tickle Harold's tummy. <laughs> you tickle Harold's tummy? Mm-hmm. I think the better question is how do we determine what is the tummy? We say, Harold, I gotta tickle your tummy. And he goes, Okay. <laughs> yeah, he does like that. Yeah. So a couple days before the great weaving in the town square, uh, Troy is going to be doing some deep cleaning, some restocking, making sure that all the barrels and all the sawdust and all the, you know, salt and the various things we need. Pot- <laughs> Gotta make water. sure you have your pockets full of sawdust. I'm never, mm-hmm. I'm never not going to have a pocket of sawdust again, okay? Uh, of now, apparently. I yes. love the idea that he just makes sure that all the barrels are there. He doesn't look inside them. He's just like, one, he counts them. He's like, yep. Yeah, counts the barrels. Mm-hmm. 16 Does barrels. check to see if they're full. Got them. This one Got has salt. It. it says salt. On the outside, so it must, must be, be right. Sodders. Pharaoh would never lie to me. No, uh, yeah, <laughs> Pharaoh would never lie to you. And uh, as he's you know polishing, cleaning, getting the outside of the boat all ready, he'd be like, "Oh, uh, hey, Harold, can can you can I tickle your tongue real quick? Um, I want to I want to get a Rello over here. We also put that on a Rello ship secretively. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm reminding us that that would be showing our hand if we decide to contact him via. That well, I want to see where he is. Yeah, the first thing, just like use him to see where he is, and then if we need to, we can be like surprise. Gotcha. Cool. Be like, Harold, that's the that's the signal we decided on, right? For your um, sorry, I want to be respectful. Is it like other Harold, same Harold, different Harold? Yes. Sill the second. I mean, you can tickle my tummy whenever you want, but I can just contact. It's I can just contact the parts of me. Oh can, yeah, tight. No, we just want to know where he is. I don't want to like break. I mean, you take me out to dinner first, please. I'm a classy lady. Okay. And and single cell amoeba. Okay, Harold. Can I can I practice the flirting back? Is that okay? If you want, yes, sure, Troy, please. Troy like dips one shoulder, and puts a hand on his hip and goes, "Okay." (laughs) That was that that good. Okay, boys. Okay, slimes. (laughs) Troy, can I be honest with you? Yeah. Four. All right, all right. Out of Got 10. Got room for improvement. Better. I love it. I love it. Harold, ugh, such good I friend. liked it, but it was a four. Thanks. It's important to be able to do it. To, you have to be you honest. You got to be honest you with each other. You got to yeah, be honest yeah, with yeah. each other. Thank you. Okay, yeah. So what Yeah. What do you want to do here? We just want to know where Arello is. You want to know where Arello is. Yeah, or I guess where his ship is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because again, this is two days before we depart. So if he's nearby... Hopefully he'll hit us up on his way back. He hasn't been to the hold in a while. And if not, then maybe we'll either decide to contact him or try to intercept him on our way up. Okay. Have you, like, let this part of Harold just chill the whole time? Like, you just let it don't be dormant? It's like you're activating your your, your homing beacon, almost? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, kind of. Or your sleeper agent, as it were? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I think that... Harold slimes and wiggles slurps. their way, mm-hmm. slurps to the front of the ship, and spreads their entire body out across the bow of the ship, really taking in the sun, just photosynthesizing like a motherfucker. Just really feeling himself. It's like, this. I gotta get in touch with my whole self so I can get in touch with my whole self. Mm. Yes. If you know what I'm saying. Work. Girl. Work. Work. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, let me think. And like, I feel like when Harold is stretched all the way, there's just like a little, there's like a puzzle piece missing oh, wow. of Harold. <laughs> all right. I am seeing it. I'm feeling it. I am on a ship there. I am in, there's boxes. There's a pillow. There are silk pillows. So fancy. And just there are barrels of ink <gasps> and there's some weird contraptions. I'm not sure go in what or do what. And I'm looking and I'm going, I'm slurping outside and I'm looking. Oh, and here's a porthole. I can just look out there and huh. Okay. It's so it's a jo- it's a skeleton. I'm we're docked outside of a skeleton, and it's large, and it's ex- it's it's very large. It's extremely large. It's the size of an island or bigger, and we're in we're docked next to it, and it's like half in the water. This is like 
This is like Pictionary. <laughs> <laughs> and, but also it's covered in some sort of, it is, it's half dissolved and the rest of it is propped up by some sort of other structure, some sort of natural structure. Oh. And it seems like a, there's a bunch of other ships around and there's, everyone is kind of going one way this way and that way and this way. And Harold, that's perfect. Thank you. And what is that? You know what I bet it is? What? I bet big creature. Okay. Laid like their head on a rock and it died. And then people were like, whoa, free building, real hold style, and built up a little building inside of it. No, it's not a build. It's. I. I hold on. I can't. Okay, it's something else. It, it, it's something else propping it up, but it's not a building. It's like it's. I'm. We're just on the outside, and I'm seeing the head thing, and it's just like. It. It's like there's there's big bricks propping up it, uh, propping it up from the outside. But I can't. I don't ha even have an eye on this thing. It's just kind of like static. It's just kind of static. Uh, they, they, I'm moving my. My you know, antenna's around. I, I, it's something else, but I guess he's at the. I guess he's at the the meeting at. The, he's at the meeting at the dissolved belt already. That's where we're going, All bud. Right. You can reunite. Oh, I, I can pick him up there if you want. I, it's. I. What is that? Well, we'll find out when we get there. You don't have to keep describing it. We'll see it probably in person. <laughs> Thanks, Harold. You really came through. Uh, okay. Now. Well, how about I? How about I spritz you with seawater? Your favorite. Oh please, especially when I'm out on the front of the ship. Oh. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Look at that golden green you're getting. You're getting. I think. <laughs> let's go, baby. Let's uh raise that anchor. Let's rip them sails. Let's hit that motor. Let's get it going. <laughs> Yeah, I would love to do shapes and omens. Like, Cami is probably going to have her cup of tea as they are leaving the hold and is going to uh, read the tea leaves to see what the shape of future events is. I like it. Yeah, everyone, Aubergine, as you know, has been on the ship for three days. <laughs> uh, he has fully taken over most of Troy's cabin and also most of Umby's cabin, which is impressive. Respecting my space, I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, maybe, or maybe you guys aren't as close as you thought. Who knows? <laughs> okay. He told a bird that we're close, so... <laughs> <laughs> He split up his like freestanding closet rack mm -hmm. hanger things yeah. yep. in all of our cabins except for Cammy's. Yeah, there's just a bed that just like is in the main hallway, and, it's, <laughs> it, and all, you can't close Umbi and Troy's door anymore <laughs> because the bed is the bed is stretching out into it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Troy's like, has this always been here? Wow. Uh, please, I need I need my space. I need to be able to have I sleep seventeen hours a day, and I also lay for six hours a day. <laughs> Is it because you're a nightshade? That's exactly why. That's why I'm poisonous if you eat me. Hey, Julia! Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, if there is an emergency, I want to die. Um, okay. Okay. I <laughs> prefer that you, you can just you, you can use me first as whatever you need. Just I will go first. You got it. I would much rather be sacrificed to help everyone else than be inconvenienced in any sort of way. Oh, uh, okay. Understandable. That is just how I live my life. Also, I need everything to be completely silent and not swaying back and forth and totally dark in order for me to fall asleep. You're going to love it here, I bet. I'm going to, it's going to be so much yeah. fun. Yeah. Harold and Syl push the sea whip off the dock, and there are still... Pirates standing outside, waving bags of money at you. Ten amber for the key, please. Where were you before? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give you my son. A pirate holds up a little berry boy. No, thank like, you. Oh, no, thank Keep you. Keep him and treasure him. I'll, I would rather trade him for treasure to treasure him. No. I've seen better boys. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Umby, what the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> 
It's called Hagalina. <laughs> Ubby's been around the block a couple times. He's seen a lot of good boys. Ubby's right. seen it. Ubby's seen some shit. Listen, yeah, man. I love yeah. it when you tell a joke that just shuts down the podcast for a brief <laughs> no, second. It's incredible. No, it's very, which is very <laughs> funny. It was so funny. We had to pull over. I was and thinking of back. It's like if you sneeze too hard when you're driving and you're like, uh-oh, it's coming. And you got to pull over. <laughs> <laughs> because it's too dangerous to sneeze while you're driving. Uh, yeah, and the hold gets further and further away as the sea whip starts to make its way towards the dissolving belt. All right, bitch, tell me about the shape of my tea leaves. <laughs> Is that what Cammy says at the into her into her pot? No, that was Julia at you. <laughs> oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, what is it? Tell me about this. What is this? When you finish a long rest, you can examine the shape of your tea leaves. The GM tells you a shape that hints at future events. Cool. Are you pouring into the cup? Where where are the tea leaves on this one? Yeah, no, it's in Cammy's usual cup. I think Cammy has a little bit of a ritual every time they set sail of just like sitting at the bow of the ship, pouring herself her cup of tea that is made out of her, because that's very important to the process. Of course. Uh, and pouring it into that kind of like delicate, we've talked about this before, but she has this tea set that is her own. That is a very delicate like wood scene, but there are kind of like dark creatures lurking in the woods the closer you look at it. I like that. I We haven't discussed this before, but saying that you cut a piece of yourself, I like this. It's like a ceremony. Do you have like a ceremonial like dagger or ornamental scissors for that you use to clip? No, it's it's a plucking, I think. Oh, I think sure. it's kind of similar to like pulling out hair, to be quite honest, where it's <laughs> like, you know, you just go. Do you have like jewel encrusted tweezers or uh, or a jeweled glove? Just my fingies. I'm not too fancy about it, you know. I'm a simple, humble tea witch. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> um, okay, Julia, would you like to know something about the near future, or would you like to know something a little bit more broad? Near future. Okay, near future. As you drink from your cup and you look at the tea leaves. You see the ship, a little ship in the tea leaves. It seems to be steering into a cloud. Okay. Of some sort. In my head, it's like you're using tea leaves to like make stick figure drawings <laughs> within a little circle. So it's like you have a little ship, and then there's this like 60% of the cup, like in a ring around the right side of the cup, is just like this cloud, this mass that the ship is steering into. Okay. Cool. Good to know. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Anything else? Any other thoughts? Well, we're going to give Aubergine some training about how to be on the ship, how to stay safe, uh, what to happen if we get into ship combat, a.k.a. I think stay out of the way and, uh, and wait for us to tell you where to go, and just like some basic protocols. Now, is this delivered to him via a old school CRT television that you rolled out onto a cart and a VHS tape that has been played 80 times and is now staticky? Or mm-hmm. okay, cool. Exactly right. Yep. Great. I have to ask: Was this CR? Was this VHS on the ship before, or did you guys record this? I think it was in the haunted office. <laughs> yeah, and we and we just taped over whatever was there without looking at it. So Harold plays all the characters. <laughs> oh wait, wait. So there was a VHS tape yeah. that said "My Wedding." Yeah. And you just like taped over it? No, wow. the the label just had a skull and crossbones, and we said okay, and just taped over it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably haunted. Maybe it was also a safety tape, but we specifically videotaped over the parts that we wanted to customize to oh, our that's boat. Good, Brandon. You know? that's, good. that's what I was thinking as well. Oh, okay, so. okay, okay. Yeah. Like an airplane safety video, but instead of like here at Delta, we're like here on the Sea Whip, and like we yeah. we you know. Oh, it was it a safety yeah, video, yeah, yeah. but yeah. oh, I thought that you kept the wedding video and then no, you no, cut no. in and then no. you, like you just inserted <laughs> yeah. it, so it was like a three-hour tape, and you just put it right in the middle, so you gotta like <laughs> fast forward ninety minutes to get to the safety video. Nah, Very nah, funny, nah, nah, but nah, a different nah. flavor. I do like the idea that we green screened in Cammy on going down the aisle or something. <laughs> <laughs> I look cute and white. <laughs> Did we also leave uh, Havana behind or is he on the ship with us? Oh no, Havana's Havana's with you. All right, cool. Don't worry, Cammy. I'm here with my uh, all of my skills and my doctor bag. I always <laughs> hope that you are, Havana. I always <laughs> hope that you are. Cammy, do you need anything sutured? Do you need anything stitched or phlebotomized? No. 
I don't know what that last one is. Sounds delicious. If you want it, I could do it for you because I know doctor things. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> Troy, I do have to show you something. It's very, it's very important. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Troy, I, I have to. Can we go somewhere? Can we go somewhere private? Of course. Okay. And at Havana pulls Troy aside. Troy's wearing the pumpy, by the way. Havana, Havana takes, uh, walks you kind of around the ship trying to find somewhere very private. No, I think everyone can hear us here. No, I think everyone can hear us here. No, I think, um, Troy, I think we're going to have to go inside. Unfortunately, we're going to have to go down to the bottom, into the ship's hold. And, uh, that's fine. For that's me to tell you live. something very inspired. <laughs> uh, we can go to the barrels. Yeah. That's fine. If that, that's what would make you more comfortable. Yeah. Troy has put a nameplate on the hold's door that just says barrel house. Yeah. <laughs> But barrels go asleep. <laughs> barrels got sleep. Yeah. Uh, really, that wasn't in the book. But barrels got sleep. I I don't know. I only know about he, about living bodies and saving them. Yeah, of course, man. What's up? Me. Uh. Well, Troy. It's very important for me to say this, but um, today, uh, you are the birthday boy, and Havana turns on the lights, and everyone goes surprise. Yay! For me? Surprise! What? And down in the hold with all the barrels. <laughs> and there's a banner that says, Happy Birthday, Troy. And there's a little cake. And Harold and Syl brought cupcakes. And cupcakes, what you could hold in your hand. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Whoa! In the place I love most where the barrels go to sleep. Guys, did you know about this? Yes. We found out about it when you left to go get your water. <laughs> Guys, that was so nice of you. You know, back back in uh, in, in where I used to come from, because this is home now, you know, uh, it was more like, oh, survived to another year without getting deposed or killed. And so it was <laughs> like, you know, everyone was like, nice. But it wasn't like, whoa, thank you. I made cannoli dip. I made tea. Aw, thanks. But it's special tea. It's my special tea. <laughs> Is it special birthday whoa, tea that whoa. has meat dumplings in it? <laughs> Guys, is this a situation no. where same word means two things? No. No. No, it's No, because no, special tea is two words. <laughs> Good. Julie, it's like Christmas soup, how like if you have the regular soup, but the, the special soup has the meat dumplings in it. Ah, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Don't. Hey, Eric, stop putting meat dumplings in your tea. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> it's so much better that way. The, Brandon, the umami comes across. <laughs> Guys, that's amazing. Thank you. I, I feel like this is going to bring us so much luck and, and happiness on our journey. And uh, you, you guys are the best. You're the best crew that a humble prince could ever ask for. And then he gives them all a big hug. For he's a jolly good pirate. For he's a jolly good pirate. For he's a jolly good pirate. And his name is Troy. Woo! 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 Aw, thanks, guys. Damn. Hey, can all of you make a perception check really quickly? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there's nothing concerning about that whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, Cammy, you can have advantage for that. Ooh, thank you. 13 for the birthday boy. <laughs> I rolled a 13 twice, so a 16. <laughs> That's oh. really unlucky. Jesus Christ, Julia. Really. <laughs> I'm fine. Um, You know, guys, I, I don't want to brag, but I did roll a 19 for my first roll, and Whoa. it's plus four for 23. Wow. Whoa. So Dang. Umby has had so many birthdays. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Umby is able to split his mind into twain to celebrate the birthday in one way and celebrate it in another. Well, mm -hmm, Cammy mm -hmm. and Umby, while you uh while Troy is enraptured in him being the birthday boy as Harold and Sill put a birthday hat on him. Whoa. It, it's so tight, it is digging into his butterfly face. Way the too little small. string is just digging in. It's gonna leave a mark for mm -hmm, a, a little mm -hmm. bit. Um Hey, you, you guys hear a buzzing, and it's low, and it's rumbling, and it's starting to, it's getting into your body. It is, like, coming from the ground and getting louder and louder and louder. Hey, Cammy, do you feel that? Yeah, um, keep celebrating Troy and his birth and continued survival. I'm going to check outside. All right. Here, take Bartlett with you. Okay. Bartlett, we're still friends, right? Ah! <laughs> Great. It's like Chandler Bing doing a whip. Whoop-ah! Whoop-ah! 
Bartlett lands on Cammy's shoulder, and Nani crawls up and crawls on top of Bartlett, and it's yeah. like a little sandwich. Oh, cute. 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 You go above with your two uh, animal companions, mm-hmm. and you go above, and you see that if we zoom out, it's like we flash the image of the T, and then we do a match cut of the ship sailing forward, mm-hmm. and it, there is a buzzing mass that the ship is heading towards of nefarious, deadly, pointy, spiny sea bees! No! What? Watch out, it's sea bees! No! My worst nightmare! Hey everybody, it's Amanda, and welcome to The Mid-Roll, where I've got to remind you that we are going on tour, baby! Go to jointhepartypod.com slash live to get your tickets now to the Rolling Bones Tour, which will see us touring with Spirits Podcast. It's going to be so much fun. The last week of March in Seattle, Minneapolis, Chicago, Boston, D.C., Philly, and New York City. We are so stoked. We want to do more touring. But first, you got to help us make this tour a success. So if you can come, you should come. If you have friends in those cities, text them. Tell them to see us. It's going to be fun no matter if you know who we are or not. I promise. Thank you and welcome to our newest patrons, James, Chibi-Yokai, Zoe, Liz, Leanne, Reka, Karina, and Noah. We so appreciate that you are prioritizing supporting Join the Party in your budget each month. We hope you are enjoying the Discord, party planning, and all of the other perks that you get as a Join the Party patron. If you would like to join you listening right now and get ad-free episodes, access to our patron-only Discord, and an additional bi-weekly video and audio podcast called Party Planning, check it out now at patreon.com slash join the party pod. If you have ever wondered what life would be like on a planet that's different from ours or how writers create your favorite fictional worlds, like maybe, I don't know, uh, our own DM Eric Silver exploring the world building of Vertistello, I highly recommend you check out Exolore, which is a fantastic podcast hosted by astrophysicist and folklorist Dr. Moya McTeer here at Multitude. You will learn and laugh and gain an appreciation for how special our planet really is when you go and check out Exolore. So look for Exolore in your podcast podcast app now or go to exolorepod.com. Get it? It's like exoplanet and folklore. It's really good. We are sponsored this week by Opera Colorado. Stick with me here. I'm so excited. Now, they are putting on for the next couple of weeks an epic retelling of everybody's favorite ghost ship legend, the Flying Dutchman. Now, they are located in Denver, Colorado, and they are extremely cool. And this production looks absolutely incredible. I know lots of you in Denver reached out when we announced the Rolling Bones tour, being like, hey, come to Denver on the next leg. We would love to. But in the meantime, y'all should go to see the Flying Dutchman at the Ellie Calkins Opera House of Opera Colorado. Now, playing February 24th through March 3rd is a never-before-seen production of The Flying Dutchman, which, if you don't know, tells the story of a cursed captain who comes to land once every seven years searching for a love to break his curse. And if you're enjoying the vibes of Campaign 3, you are seriously going to enjoy this production. They were also kind enough to put together a discount code for us so you can save 20% on your tickets with no handling fees using the promo code JOINTHEPARTY at Opera Colorado. Colorado.org. Once more, this is in Denver, Colorado, February 24th through March 3rd. Get 20% off your tickets with no handling fees using promo code JOINTHEPARTY at operacolorado.org. We are also sponsored this week by Details of Our Escape, a wonderful new tabletop role-playing game from award-winning publisher Possible Worlds games. Now, we told you about this last week, and the Kickstarter is still going strong. Now, remember, Details of Our Escape is one part rule book, one part art book, and one part speculative fiction. I read it, and it was really moving and made me really excited to want to play it, especially because it's played with dominoes instead of dice, which is really, really cool. The idea here is that players are controlling a caravan of over 2,000 people in search of a new home what exactly they're leaving, and what kinds of strange and wonderful sights they encounter along their journey is up to you and your table. However, what party members continue all the way through to the caravan's final destination, well, that's up to fate in the form of dominoes. It's very cool. 
So go ahead and check out their Kickstarter now. Go to bit.ly slash details of, or click the link in the description. The Kickstarter is live February 5th through February 29th. Go on over to bit.ly slash details of and support them now. All right, folks, now back to the show. Hey, Eric. Yeah. Can I roll a nature check and see if I know what deters sea bees? Sure. <laughs> sea bees, sea bees, sea bees. Sea bees, sea bees. That is a 15 plus 5 for a dirty 20. Dirty 20. Well, first I'll describe the sea bee. If you were looking at one, I think it's about the size. It's like one to two feet large. They're quite large living out here on the ocean. It is a combination of a bee and a sea urchin. Kind of like a bee drill, the Pokemon. I think it's kind of like longer like that instead of a big squishy boy like a bumblebee. Uh, it has like the thorax and the head and the arms and the and the wings, but it also has spines everywhere, deadly purple spines everywhere, mm-hmm. uh, especially one big purple stinger uh, with big red eyes. And they're in a big, big, big swarm that is collected in the way of the ship. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of them. There's a hell of a lot of them. Also, Cammy, when you go above board, you also see that there are a bunch of other ships that are around you. There are other pirate ships coming from other directions that are going to the same place as you. You would assume they're all going to the dissolving belt as well. And they're kind of getting lost, in not in the fog, but in the fog of the swarm of sea bees. Uh, you also notice they're dripping. Uh, some of them are kind of like dripping some sort of substance off of their spines. Is it sea honey? Sea honey? Uh, with a dirty 20, I will tell you it's sea bee honey. You're right. Yeah. I assume that Cammy has harvested sea bee honey before for her teas. Yes. Delicious. Yes. Tell me, what's a, what, why do you, what do you use it for? What, what's its defining property? I think that kind of like Szechuan peppercorns, they numb your tongue a little bit, Ooh. which is a fun experience. Give me that mala spice. Yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's very, it's a little spicy and it's a little n- numbing on the lips. I like that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Cammy likes to use it for like add a little spice to the tea that she's serving. In my in my head, it's like it's a dark purple, like off of these like royal purple spines that are everywhere around the bee and the stinger, and some of them are dripping with this darker purple, this uh, deep midnight purple, almost uh, sea bee honey. I want it to be mm. real. With uh, Julia's dirty twenty, do we know if the bees are sort of like aggressive or? Well, they're, they're unhappy that you are sailing into them in the way that animals are pissed that you're near them, even though it was not your intention to bother them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they're aggressive. They get more and they're buzzing more and more aggressively as you are getting closer and closer. But you're not in the swarm yet. If, again, this was like ship fog, you're kind of like heading into it in the way that fog is like a real dense, opaque cloud. You are heading into it now. Are the other ships around us also heading directly into the fog, or does it seem like they're trying to avoid it and go around it? Some of them are starting to change tact and, and find a different way around. Remember, they're all coming from different directions, so mm-hmm. you can't, your going around is harder to understand, so some of them are going through, and some of them are like changing and turning a little bit. Mm-hmm. Guys, players, friends, mm-hmm. colleagues, you know what bees hate? What do bees hate? What do bees smoke hate? what makes them sleepy? Smoke what makes them sleepy, Amanda. Sure sleepy sure smoke. Back. Sleepy smoke. Smoke bomb time. <laughs> Woo. I just love the idea of Cammy being like, uh, and then the umby comes running and just goes, Wah! and it's a smoke bomb. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Now, Brandon, I do just have to suggest a little electric guitar riff after every time Eric says CBs. Oh, yeah. Ultimately, your call, just a, just a suggestion. Okay. Take it or leave it. Can we, can we test it? Yeah, could you give me a, a bite of what that might sound like, Amanda? So I would say something like CBs. <laughs> cool. Cool. Is that good? That's pretty good. I like it. That's pretty good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. It's important you play the guitar up on your, on your clavicle. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you gotta have it up there for the CBs. Incredible! All right, folks, we are in. Uh, it's all. It's all happening. It, it's kind of like the Pokemon battle music has gone, and it's ba 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 ba. Umby, let, please, let's make him a dexterity check to see if the bees or Umby go first. Come on, no way, no way. I'm scared to roll it, Eric. Just roll it. You got this. 
16 plus 3, 4, 19, baby. Fuck yeah, dude. I rolled a 19 on the dice, and it, I and I'm going to add some dexterity to that. So I'm going to go first. I don't know, Eric. I think I think you would. I think B's plus zero. Plus Minus zero one. dexterity. Not, not dexterous slow. at all. Slow. Famously, famously, slow. famously slow. imprecise, slow, yep. clumsy. Well, I would say an individual B might have high dexterity. But, but a cloud? A swarm? No. Mm, I don't slow. know. I don't know. All confused by their friends and their butts. <laughs> See these? I'm so tickled. Especially this specific species of bee. 19 notorious. plus 3 for a 22. Oh, tie. <laughs> that sounds like bullshit. Yeah, with that 22 and a 19 ties. You're right. You're right. Um, the bees make a move forward and surround the ship. The hum gets louder and louder and louder. You feel it in your bones. You feel it in your thoraxes. You feel it in your other bug parts. And you feel it in your stems. And you feel it in your petals and your roots. And they surround your ship and get closer and closer. It is now opaque. You cannot really see outside of the cloud of sea bees. Troy downstairs partying with Harold and Syl and Aubergine is like, I'm so happy my teeth are vibrating. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> oh now i think you have a butterfly with teeth oh no oh no oh no I don't like oh no that is my move umby go ahead uh umby's going to throw a big old smoke bomb hell yeah dude tell me about it does it does it make bees sleepy amanda what does it do exactly yeah so when you when you smoke bees that's what it's called don't laugh Four okay, tw- 420 bees. Uh, smoke them bees. <laughs> yes, you pipe in like a specific cloud of smoke that makes them sluggish and sleepy. And so they don't have the instinct to sting you because most of the time they either go to sleep or they move so slow it's like they're drunk. Ah, yeah. I'm going to get these We're going to make some drunk bees. Fucked up. <laughs> get them bees fucked up. Buzz them if you got them. Buzz them <laughs> if you got them. All right. So this is going to be a, this is an attack roll. Yeah, it should be a bomb throw, which is a plus seven now. Sure, dude. Yo. I got a nine, so it's 16 to hit. That hits? Yes. So what what do you do with the smoke bomb? Well, the smoke bomb normally deals no damage, but fills a 10-foot radius sphere with smoke. Oh, So okay. the area becomes heavily obscured. But I'm hoping that uh, because of my brilliant creativity and knowledge of bees... That uh, my DM will give me a little bit of a no. A your B knowledge that's great. Okay, so you have a ten foot a ten foot radius sphere. It's quite large. It's going to be quite helpful. I'm going to do a saving throw. I think that uh, there would be a probably an intelligence saving throw. I have a bomb saving throw. So you have to hit. Yeah, it is intelligence. I think so. It's a sixteen total for me. By the way, guys, uh, Indigenous Americans invented uh, smoking bees, and then Quakers were like, "Wait a minute!" Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Pretty dope. Yeah. They use like a, a puffball fungus, which like anesthetized these. Oh, that's awesome. All right. I'm going to roll a wisdom save. And luckily I have a negative one to wisdom. <laughs> I would hope these bees are not that wise. They're not wise. So what am I trying to roll, Brandon? What's your, you what's your save? You got a bomb save, which is a 16. Uh, all right. 16. Pretty high. I got a 15 on the dice. That's a 14. Yes. Oh, whoa, 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 these bees whoa, whoa, are whoa, whoa, sleepy. Whoa. Yay. We got some sleepy bees. Thank you, Eric. These you, uh, Eric. large chunk of the sea bees are now getting drowsy. They're like wiggling and, and trying to keep themselves up. I think a lot of them retreat. Some of them like almost fall, uh, tumble down and touch the water and catch themselves before mm. they touch the water. Uh, you see like two of them kind of get down towards the sea and then like uh, a claw comes up and grabs two of them. So uh, I would say that the sea bees that start to, a big chunk of the sea bees start to retreat, especially in uh, surrounding the, the smoke sphere that I'll be through. Toit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Okay. There are still sea bees around though. You are still pretty surrounded by sea bees, except for there, you have some more clearance. Cool. I don't know if this helps, Eric, but it, it is, yes, it stays for a number of rounds equal to my intelligence modifiers, which is four. Oh, that is helpful. Yeah. That's great. Eventually, you will pass it, like throwing trash out of a car. Yeah. <laughs> um, it will be like at your side or enter the back of you uh, as you start mm-hmm. to pass it for this next round of sea bees. Does anyone want to? Yeah. What else do you want to do? I think that Cammy would like to, using shape water, create kind of like an ocean shield mm. as oh, sure. she sees the swarm kind of move more towards the ship. Ooh, that's good. Hell right. yeah. I like that. Yeah. Give me an arcana check. Good answer, yeah. good answer. Woo, good answer. <laughs> good answer. 
that is a 14 plus 5 for a 19. Ooh, 19. Yeah, you can pull that water up and create a little shield for the ship. It's like it's wearing a little shirt <laughs> made out of water. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Or like a little, or like a bulletproof vest made out of water. I kind of like it. But it's for a ship. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. That's pretty tight. Wings don't want to land in water. Mm-mm. Wings get no. wet. No good. Wings get wet. Can't fly away. Exactly. Yeah. No, no. They get eaten by those crab things that just ate the other ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, at this point, Harold goes, and it's time for karaoke, and pulls out the karaoke machine. Troy, make a performance check for <laughs> for karaoke at your oh my birthday. God. Thank God. <laughs> I think that Umby and Cammy at this point have decided, like, don't tell Troy. Let him. In enjoy his birthday. <laughs> it's a four plus two, but it is my birthday, so I think people are nice to me about it, but it's bad. <laughs> yeah. The pumpy whines for the first time. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. He's just he's just crying in uh, excitement of how good you're he singing. He wants you to yeah. sing more. He's, he's howling along with you. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you. Yeah. I like that. I like that. All right, cool. It is now going to be the CB's turn, and a bunch of the CB's are going to attack a bunch of our friends. Um, they're going to attack the ship and Umby and Cammy. They're going to sting you with their weird stingers. Hey, what's your AC, folks? 13. 13. 14. You were lucky I rolled badly. Uh, the CBs, as they get closer, the aggressive ones that are upset that a bunch of their friends are, are smoke drunk right now, attack the ship and Cammy and Umby, diving in with all of their weird sticky pins. Uh, slicing at all of you. Uh, a bunch of them get caught in the water barrier surrounding the ship, and they both miss Cammy and Umby. Yay! Whoa. How do you do? Hey, how do you defend against the sea bees? I think Cammy's doing some real like Avatar: The Last Airbender water bending. Oh to- fuck! Yeah. <laughs> moving the water, moving the water around. I think Umby has become one with the smoke, and you just mm. see like his eyes just go like you know from one spot to another spot to another spot. To another spot. Night crawling around. <laughs> you were doing the same thing, still like you were like trailing a smoke bomb behind you, just using it like a like a exactly yeah, yeah a yeah. gymnastics ribbon. Mm-hmm. I like that. Uh, it's your turn. What do you want to do? Hmm. Can I? Ooh, I have a shenanigan. Sure. Sill counts as a creature, right? Yeah. Can Sill spread himself across the entirety of the ship? Yeah, if you want to, uh, if you, you want to get Sil from the party, for sure. Yes, I think Cammy like is just gonna duck her head into the cabin very quickly, and be like, "Sil, can I borrow you for just a quick second?" <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I um, I'm gonna miss Troy doing more karaoke, but I guess I gotta go help. You know, I'll send you back as soon as I can. I promise. <laughs> Cammy, don't do that. Troy's not good. Shh, don't ruin his day. And then Cammy's gonna be like, "I just need you to spread." all across, as much of across the ship as you can manage, okay? As Syl looks around and says, oh, because of the bees? <laughs> yes, but additional stuff. Oh. And he spreads as much as possible. Yeah, Syl can spread as, as much as possible. It is just like, it is now carpeted with a weird black moss is just covering the entirety of the ship. Love it. Cammy is going to cast Sanctuary on Syl. Ooh. Ooh. Hell yeah. Okay, what is that? Yeah, what's that like? You ward a creature within range against attack. Until the spell ends, any creature who targets the warded creature with an attack or a harmful spell must first make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature must choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. This spell doesn't protect warded creatures from area effects, such as the explosion of a fireball. Right, that's very good. Yeah, okay, so well, yeah, what does this look like? I think that Cammy, like, very gently boops sill like on the railing like wherever he is spread out and it shimmers like ripples in water and Mm. then into that kind of golden light that we've established as cammy's magic Ooh, that's cool dang Mm -hmm. and now the ship is just like doing that and now it just looks like that now the ship just being like that the ship ship just be be like that ship just be like the ship like just see be like that I think that a bunch of the sea bees like disperse a little bit. They they're getting farther away from the sanctuary. I think even sea bees know this is something that you don't mess with at all. And it's starting to clear up a little bit. Like it's a little less quote unquote bee foggy uh, as it is. And I think you can see some. There are some other ships that are cutting in various directions, trying to cut through the sea bees. Some of them, one of those ships are making various tacks from left to right, trying to serpentine their way through. Another one is just kind of going straight across the horizon. It's almost like they came from the left and are just steamrolling through, diving into a more dense part of the sea bees. 
Yeah, you can see a few ships, and uh, they can see you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you that much. Cammy goes. Wow, life must be harder without magic. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking tell me about it, Cammy. <laughs> You kind of do magic, buddy. <laughs> Umby, your explosions are magic. Not as magic as this. Now I'm glowing. But still, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's when there was an explosion one place, and then there wasn't. You tell him, Sil. We- weapons and machinery are its own type of magic. If violent and terrible, but like divine terrible. Like the divine awesome. Thanks, bud. With yeah. a capital A and a capital T. <laughs> Wonderful. Hell yeah, dude. So what is our situation? Is there still bees around or what's the sitch? There are bees around. I think with the circle of smoke is then going to be behind you next turn. And I think that the bees are filling in behind you. But the sanctuary that is covering the entire ship at the moment is doing a good job. Like a tiki torch is doing a good Mm. job keeping the bugs away. Like a mosquito candle. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to just, like, try to incapacitate some of the bees that I see. So, like, wherever the densest population of flying insect friends is right now. Sure. I'd like to throw a bramble bomb over there. Oh, sure. Bramble bomb! Bramble bomb? This does make it difficult terrain, but I was just looking it up, and I think it doesn't affect flying creatures. But. However. What it does do, the bramble bomb specifically, when it detonates, it envelops the creatures so you must succeed on a athletics check against my bomb save before it can move or stand oh so they're all like stuck to each other yeah no they're that's like cool. stuck in um i imagine it's like vines coming out from the bomb from the know? bomb yeah absolutely yeah toss that stuff up there i love that let's see if it works all right give me an attack roll buddy well that was only a 12 total <laughs> That feels about right. Listen, the bees might have an 11 it was AC. Still, it was cool, though. I liked the part where you where you described it. Thanks. I guess all the bees are just too small. They go between the, the vines. You I know? know. And they're all they're already covered in a, in a weird, sticky, prickly substance. Yeah. So they're like, oh, actually, now there's a bunch of bees that are all stuck together. But now they're just flying together <laughs> in a big <laughs> bee mass. Like a rat king. You, yeah, you throw the bomb up, the, the vines shoot out with their thorns and, like, intertwine, I think, with the sea urchin pins that are off of the sea bees and just mm-hmm. kind of stick together, like, when um, deer have their antlers stuck together. Mm. So Aww. now, like, but it's Julia, but this is cool and not sad. Yes. <laughs> because now <laughs> ten sea bees are just flying together. <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so did that work? or Is that is this better or worse, as Brandon wants to know? <laughs> I, so they are stuck together, but now it's more terrifying. So I think a fail here is a neutral. It is neither. Okay. It got better, but then it also got worse. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. But if they're lashed together, then maybe, you know, single target. It's a target, right? They, yeah. they, yes. It's all more for flavor. I'm treating them all as one swarm anyway, but I thought it was funny. Yeah. I think it's fun, yeah. Hey, hold on. I'm turning to the studio audience. I thought it was funny. Sea bees! Got it. Nailed it. Oh no! Troy's trying to break dance. Performance check. I thought I thought we banned that on the ship. Uh, it's an eight plus two. Yeah, it's because you two aren't there to ban it. Aubergine <laughs> doesn't know. Aubergine's like, I've never seen someone do a hurricane on the ship. <laughs> yeah, it's like really close to the floor is the point. <laughs> Like, normally you're dancing, you're like, up. No, 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 you're down. This is when you're down. <laughs> it's pa- it's passable. It's passable breakdancing. Yeah. Everybody at basic training told me I was the best at it. <laughs> and they definitely didn't tell you that because you were the prince. No, of course not. Blink. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Hell yeah. All right, so yeah, you're past, so the smoke is behind you. The CBs are now getting denser around you. Everyone, let's see. Let's re-roll initiative a little bit and see how it goes of who gets to go first. Rolled a 15. 19 total. 19. Nice. Oh, we all rolled really well. Dang, I got an 18. Wonderful. Do you want to let Troy roll dexterity to see how many times he can break dance, like, <laughs> in the next round? Yeah, or? Amanda, do you want to wanna keep break dancing? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's an 8 plus 2 again. He's consistent, folks. Consistently yep. Yep. mediocre. Yep. <laughs> yep. We love that for him. Okay, so that's that. Uh, Umbi, what do you want to do? Oh, well, Eric, what I would like to do, I'm just going to throw a regular good old stink bomb. Stink bomb. Stink bomb. 
I'm going to prime this stink bomb. So uh, I'll do extra shit if I hit. But let's see if I hit first. Yeah. When did you, you get stink bombs recently? I think I swapped one out when I changed levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you make these stink bombs? How did you invent them? Oh. Is this what you did while you were waiting to see if you were going to get murdered? You, inv <laughs> you invented stink bombs? Yeah. Well, when you're that sleep deprived, um, mm. you kind of just like wander around the island looking for things to keep you awake. And, you know, the smellier, the better. That really keeps you awake. Sure, so you sure. You found some really stinky shit, Eric. I've heard that. Not literal shit, but stuff that is stinky, you know? Oh, okay. So, yeah. What did you put together for the stink? What's a pun on a skunk? A plant pun on a skunk. Skunk cabbage. So mm. so much skunk cabbage where I was growing up in the woods constantly. Really? It smelled like farts yeah. next to certain parts of the highway all the time. That's how you know it's spring because we would drive into Oakdale, Amanda, and you would be like, ah, the skunk cabbage. Is it better or worse than, than the sexy pears? Oh, it's better than the sexy pears. Oh, honestly. damn. Oh. Yeah, I think uh, I think I found some some of y'all's childhood favorite skunk cabbage out <laughs> in the nice. hold. Golden's Bridge, New York, the state's capital for skunk cabbage. <laughs> and I distilled that on my distiller, and so now I have a little vial, and it only takes one single fucking drop to uh, make you want to run away real quick, you know? Sure. Yeah, do it, do it. Nice. I got a 10 plus 7 for 17. Oh, that hits. Yeah. Oh, tight, Eric. Tight. Fucking did it. Okay, so the damage dice are 2d8 plus my intelligence modifier since they're primed. That's a two. That's a six. So eight plus four is twelve damage. Oh hell yeah! And nice. now and, and now and they're stinky. Yes. I don't think this really matters, but you it does require a Constitution saving throw, and if you fail it, you have disadvantage on ability checks till next turn. Oh sure. I rolled a seventeen, so unfortunately these bees love being stinky. Yeah, they do love being stinky. They're super into being stinky, but they don't like being exploded while being stinky. Right, exactly. Uh, so does? a bunch of I think a bunch of the some of the bees fall in the water, more of the bees just start to disperse. And it's getting a little clearer around you. Hell yeah. Hell We're yeah. We're doing it. We're doing it. Nice. It's the bees' turn. Remember that they have to make wisdom saving throws if they're gonna attack us. Does um, just the ship? Yes, yeah. just the ship. What do the sea bees want to do? What do sea bees want to do? What do what do they want to do? What do they want to do? All I want to do is have some fun. I am a sea bee. <laughs> I'm not the only one. <laughs> All right. I think that the sea bees, um, you know what? The sea bees are going to retreat. They're going to pull back from where they were before, and they're going to keep in a circle. They're going to circle the wagons around you. So they're going to keep kind of like a steady radius surrounding surrounding you. So now as you cut, you kind of like are cutting through the fog of the swarm right now where they, they're keeping like a decent distance, but they're not, they're keeping an eye on you and a stinger, a jelly-coated stinger on you as you're making your way through. Tight. Gotcha. The bees are like, I hate this. I hate you. I don't like that you're here. I'm going to watch you, but I'm not going to get in your face. So stop blowing me up with stinky with stinky bombs. They say wiggling their pit. That's all from wiggling their... From butt wiggles. Mm -hmm. From yeah. butt wiggles, yeah. We know. We know. All I got is stinky bombs, baby. So I think Troy is making everyone in the holes of the ship compliment him uh, for his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> See, I make sure, a charisma sure. check. Like you do. Okay. All right. 11 plus 2, it's a 13. So people think it's tacky, but they will go along with it. Yeah, right. yeah, they'll they'll do it, but they weren't prepared. So no one gives you like a super good compliment. It's all like on the spot That's things. Fine. And a lot of it is superficial. Like, I really like how you're, I like how you're, you're um, nice. Thanks. <laughs> I like how you look with like your shirt off. Yeah, I like when you take off your shirt and how nice you look. People do. Cammy, it's your turn. You're still around. If you can do anything you want, um, I don't have to maintain concentration for sanctuary, which is pretty cool. That is I'm not cool. gonna lie. That's tight. Uh, so I think I'm gonna keep trying to maintain then the the shape water shield. Sure. So that if the sea bees come for me or for Umbi, now they have uh, less of a chance to hit us. No, that's yeah. fair. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Give me perception checks, both of you. Perception. Perception. Not good. Julia, you're not good is like a 14. Well, it's a three plus three for a six. Okay. But... Julia, 
I also rolled a three. No, Brandon. Twins. You're not allowed to twins me when we're that low. Twins. Uh, I got a three plus four for seven. Okay. I get like stingered in the back. Directly in the spine. Better in the butt. Or in the butt. <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> that be would so be so embarrassing. Be um, yeah. 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 Umbi, yeah. what's your AC? 14. 14. Cammy, you're holding the water up. Sill is gl- glowing below you. The bees are starting to clear out. You see that the ship, yeah, as it's starting to like, almost like condense around you, like you're seeing the ships that are cutting around you. you they're like fading into the background. Like you have this, like now you have this just aura around you, but it's becoming opaque again. And then you hear a, <laughs> and a pop, and you turn and you see that in Umbi's right shoulder, in his chest, where his shoulder and his chest meet, there's like a little box the size of like a, of a ring box. Okay. It wasn't there before. And Umbi, you feel this <gasps> with force that pushes your arm back. And you look down and you see this box and it's blinking and it blinks once, <gasps> twice. Oh shit. Three times. No. <laughs> Damn. Damn dude. I know a bomb when I see one. I knew it was about to happen. Let me get, hold on a second. Let me get. Let me get something really quick. The glove? Did you forget the Does glove? Does he need the glove? Oh, sorry. No, my glove was here the whole time. Uh, <laughs> no, I have to get something else. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Amanda, can you give me your D10s? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> At least Eric can't do two times damage to objects and structures. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. Good point. Good point. What if it's just a teleportation bomb? That'd be nice. What if he's just teleporting? You're whisked away to the queen of the sea bees. To a spa. (sighs) Oh, boy. Let's see. I heard at least four. Maybe five? I think five or six. Amanda, can you you help count this with me? All right. So that's 10, 14, 16. 18. 18. So hold on to that. You're fine. Yeah. Oh. Oh, never mind. Oh, (laughs) no. You remember it? And then I'm going to add that six plus four plus nine. Uh, Umbi, please take 43 points of damage. Okay. I will, Eric. You're still up, right? I'm still up. Perfect. Let's see. 43 minus five is 38 is 19. I still have 19 points of health. You You have 19 points of health? Yeah. Wow, that was a chunky hit. I will say, though, that like a fucking cartoon, Umbi's, like, leaves and hat are, like, fried up and blackened. Mm-hmm. You it's know? Scorched. Yeah, You're like just Daffy scorched. Duck. Yeah. Uh, I also like the idea. It's almost like a, it was like a firebomb around you, just surround, only surrounding Umbi. Mm-hmm. It's like Umbi went up in flames. But I think that especially with Sill, like the Sill sanctuary carpet below it, he like he went, you went up in flames and it didn't touch anything else. It was just surrounding you. Mm-hmm. And you go, and you were just crispy. Now you have 19 left. God damn. Umbi, you good? Oh, that hurt. Yeah, that didn't look great. Yeah, let the beat drop. <laughs> <laughs> Troy hears a giant explosion outside. Is like, boom! Woo! Yeah, boom! I'm 24. <laughs> and I'm never gonna die, Eric. It's because like a poisoner drinks their own poison to gain immunity to it. An explosioner. Explodes themselves little by little. <laughs> Not the first time Umbi's found himself on the business end of a bomb. Exactly. No, 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 no. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. I rolled badly. I gotta say, I rolled ten d ten, and I got forty three. You lucky, you lucky motherfucker. A number yeah. of those were twos. Yeah. A number of those were twos, and I got a nine, which I think brought me up. Yeah. Oof. Jesus. Okay. Important to say, Bartlett still with Cammy. So. Yep, he's okay. <laughs> yeah, Bartlett's yeah, Bartlett's fine for sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we're out of the fighting stance. We're out of initiative. We did it. Cammy, what the fuck was that? What shot me? It was a bomb. Why? I think you probably knew that. Was it a bee? Did a bee carry a fucking bomb? <laughs> no, I think it might have been one of the other ships. 
Oh, fuck. Maybe they just don't like us. I'm going to have to murder a whole fucking crew, aren't I? Well, I don't know what ship it was. I was kind of distracted by all the bees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does Umby swear like an old prospector? Like, God flippity flap it. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I think Umby curses like Joe Pesci in Home Alone. No, he curses like a sailor, guys. Come on. <laughs> I'm not critiquing I'm not critiquing what you did. I just wanted Umby to say God flippity flab it. God flippity flab it. Thank you. Yeah. I'll put that on the soundboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how uh, how was how was that? Was that good for you? <laughs> no, Eric, it was bad. It hurt. It was bad. Sorry, I'm B. Who Sorry. are you talking to? No one. <laughs> okay. No, but nobody. Uh, I think that the, the sea remains calm here as you are continuing forward again. The bees are the sea bees are giving you space and they'll kind of just allowing you to move through. And Umbi and Cammy, you still hear that the uh, the loud dance music from Troy's party is still going. Well, Troy's birthday was not ruined, so I think we did a good job. I could use some fucking rum punch right now. Do you want me to get Havana? Yeah. Okay, I'll go swap. Sil, once we're out of the bees, you can go back to the party, and then we'll swap Havana out, and then we'll be all good. We'll we'll do. Uh, Umbi, what what happened? <laughs> what happened? I got I got hit. I got hit. I got hit. Oh! I got exploded. Who doesn't like bomb. you? I don't know. I feel like a you would only people. do that to someone who you don't like specifically. I've got a list in my back pocket, um, but most recently, uh, probably that one millipede from the hold. Does she do bombs, though? She seemed like a stabby, stabby kind of person, you know, because, like, it's kind of sexual in that way. No, with, like, it's penetration. not. <laughs> no, it's no? not. Okay. I think it's, like, sort of like an irony-like thing, like, uh, look what I can do. It can do your thing, too, you piece of shit. Hey, Eric, mm -hmm. I saw the bomb once it had already landed on Umbi, but before it exploded, right? For a moment, yeah. Can I do an arcana check or like an investigation or something like that to determine if I've seen that kind of technology before? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Oh, also, mm -hmm. while Julia's doing that, for the first time ever, Eric, Yeah. can I use my natural philosopher ability? Sure. Which gives me, I can add half my proficiency bonus rounded up to any ability check to identify herbs, potions, poisons, or other alchemical substances? Sure. Yeah, dude, you can do that too. Do an arcana check as well. Fuck yeah. I rolled a nine plus five for a 14. Okay. Cammy, I think this was a little fast. It was a little quick for you. You saw That's it only fair. for a moment. I think the other thing is that it came from far away and it, it crossed your vision as it shot across the boat hitting Umbi. I have a theory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a theory. Okay. Well, I rolled an eight, but it is plus 10. So it's Whoa. 18. Yeah. Eight plus 10. This bomb needs to be small enough to be shot from a large distance. It's pretty impressive that it is so small and created such a large impact. Also interesting, it only hit you. Mm -hmm. Now, that might have been also partially because of the sanctuary that was on the floor, but it is quite interesting because your bombs go big boom, and this one went specific boom. Can I identify any of the trace element things that are still on me to like see where they might be sourced from? Like if that's maybe someone loves using or is very commonly known to be using silver in their bombs, whatever, you know? Oh, interesting. Um, I think that everything you would get across is like, yeah, you would have to use, this would have to be made out of something that was lightweight, but also sturdy enough to hold enough not the same amount of boom as you use, but it has to be able to hold something that can be shot from a far distance. So big explosive potential. I would say lightweight because it needs to fly through the air and it's probably being shot out of something. You wouldn't, you don't throw these Got it. because it would be too light. It, it doesn't have enough heft on its own to, if you just tossed it, uh, but it doesn't have to carry as big of a boom. In fact, it's quite interesting that it's specific to just one person. Is what I would say. Okay. I wonder if we've, like, you know, met a very technologically advanced sniper in, say, like, a, a shooting competition before that liked Umbi, but maybe didn't like Umbi so much when we left. Maybe. I don't... Did I piss him off that much, though? I mean, 
his boat got all fucked up, so. I don't know. There's a, hey, Julia, the list of people who Umbi is pissed off is so <laughs> long. <laughs> I know, but not a lot of them are technologically advanced snipers is what I'm trying to yeah, get at. Yeah. Yeah. Who are you thinking of specifically, Julia? Archimedes Sevens. Oh, Archimedes Sevens. Yeah, you did. He did. He was your favorite son, and then you didn't help him from his perspective. Did I not help him? I mean, this was specifically a bomb, and we also, we don't think Archimedes... Oh, Archimedes could have a key because they have the blueprints in mm-hmm. a hothouse, and he's supposed to be the next builder, so... I was thinking that spider silk is very lightweight, very strong, uh, would be too light to throw, but maybe when shot from a, you know, there could be some kind of Tessie the Storm involvement here. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I... I think for the time being, Umbi's just going to kill everyone they see just as a precaution. <laughs> just as a precaution. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, when you're a bomb maker, everything looks like something you want to explode. <laughs> yeah, sure. that's true. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. All right. You're sailing forward. Cammy and Umbi, do you get Troy at all or you're good? <laughs> no, we go and we check in on him again once Umbi is like sutured up, I feel like. Oh, yeah. And then we're like, oh. The party's still going. Uh, Havana, like, just dunks you in a big vat of pink lotion. <laughs> He's like, you should get your, let's get your skin back. Let's, <laughs> let's get your skin back. Also, is it worse if your doctor is also wearing a little party hat? Do you trust him less? <laughs> no, I, I love a doctor who clearly just came from an event to deliver a baby or something. Yeah, I think I trust him more. Yeah. Havana's wearing, like, a white button-down shirt with a printed tie that is loosened <laughs> and then he also has his white coat over it but it's like mm-hmm. roll his sleeves are rolled up yeah. and also he has a big he has a party hat like I think it's wrapped all the way around his body so it's extra <laughs> tight like it has to go all the way around the orange slice. Love mm-hmm. that for him. And he's a, he is he is filled up like a big, almost like what looks like the the bucket of a water tower, and it's just filled with pink lotion Aww. that he's just dunking a bee into. <laughs> now, do does that pink lotion give me HP back? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, you're fine. Don't worry. Yes, don't worry about it. You're fine. You're fine. What do you mean well, I'm fine? I have 19 hit points left. Actually, no, that no, Brandon, you're right. That's right. <laughs> you're right, Brandon. Havana's not good enough to heal you all the way back up to full health yet. Well, my D10s continue. I rolled... <laughs> I rolled 3D10. Unfortunately, this Calamine lotion only heals you 7, but it does oh. heal you 7. I rolled 3D10, my guy. I don't know what's going on with my dice. Yeah, that was generous. I thought the Calamine lotion would fix you right up. You're not itchy, though. That's helpful. You don't, you don't, you don't scratch at your burns. That's <laughs> that good. Yeah, that, that helps heal along the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brandon shouldn't have questioned when Eric said, you're all good, my guy. You should have been like, all right, I'm back to full health. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. All right, and that is when the bees start to... To part, you finally get to a point where oh, the bees... Oh, do we th- part the red bees? <laughs> yes, Julia! Julia, yes! here's your joke in. Here it is. Call us the Moses because we are parting them bees. <laughs> uh, the sea bees then start to retreat. The bees in front of you start to flutter back and reveal what you have been sailing towards. Through the description from Harold earlier, you see what he was talking about. Stretching in front of you, up 10 stories tall, is a massive, massive, what looks to us like a whale skeleton. It is 10 stories tall, a full city block long, partially submerged into the water. You see only kind of like 60% of it, but the mouth is lolling into the water as an opening for people to walk inside, which many pirates have already done. Cool. There are string lights hung, everything. It's like someone has taken like an old barn and turned it in for a wedding. You can see that they've really adorned it. There's string lights everywhere. There's cocktail tables dotting the jaw leading inside. And you can see on a uh, on an easel, <laughs> on an easel out front, the first annual Pirates Discussion Conference. Okay. <laughs> Pirates are carousing. They're they are drinking and partying, kind of surrounding the locust point right in the middle. Shining gold is a tall, large monarch butterfly with a white top hat and a white vest and a white jacket and, a, and white pants and gold shoes because it has to match. Their monarch butterfly wings stretched all the way out, stiff, because they are covered in gold. It is metal and shining in the light 
of the fires and the string lights that have been adorned around the monster skeleton. You also look down, and, and the, the light is catching on the water, because as you look down, you can see all the way to the bottom of the sea. It is totally clear. There is nothing swimming around in there. And as the sea bees retreat to their hive that they have built onto the side of this giant whale monster skeleton, which almost is buttressing it like an addition onto the house that is kind of around along its spine, you can see that there's like dark purple hexagons that are built into the side, into the back of the skeleton. As you and some uh, and other pirate ships sail up, the monarch butterfly steps forward and says, Welcome, pirates, key holders and all! We have many notions to debate and treaties to draft, but first, we party! Woo! <laughs> we go from one party to another, look at that! <laughs> That all green folk know Until, until the water falls home That only began 50 years ago Until, until the water falls home We seek the deep lake and a wish-granting salmon Until, until the water falls home So hoist up the sails and look 